So on the back of every single pool chemical on earth, there is something in common. And that is for X amount of gallons of water, you need to add X amount of the chemical. And how many gallons of water does your pool hold? Well, if you don't know, we're gonna show you how to find out. Let's dive in. All right, if you want the quick answer and the easiest way to find out how many gallons are in your pool, you can go to swimuniversity.com slash pool dash calculator. You can enter in your dimensions and your depth and it'll tell you how many gallons of water. But if you have a very special pool or you wanna do it the old fashioned way, we're gonna show you every single type of measurement that you're gonna need. We're gonna show you how to do the calculations, all the formulas to find out how much water is in your pool. Okay, so we're about to get into some math. And before we do that, we need to whisk you back to middle school math class to get down some basics. So let's go. Okay, before we start measuring your pool, let's go over a few things we'll use to calculate your pool's volumes. The first is the basic equation elements. We have the area, the length, and the width. These are all represented by single letters. Then you have your depth, the volume, the radius. And then finally, we have pi at 3.14, which is a constant. And I'm not gonna get past two decimal places because I'm not a math -achist. Get it? Okay, never mind. Moving forward. And in case geometry class was a while ago, it certainly was for me. Here's a few basic formulas to calculate area. We have the area of a square or a rectangle, which is length times width. That gives you the area. We have the area of a right triangle, which is length times width divided by two. And that'll give you the area of a right triangle. And finally, we have the area of a circle, which is pi 3.14 times radius squared, and that will give you the area of a circle. Now let's calculate the cubic volume. We're gonna to need to know this because to calculate the cubic volume, you'll need to include the pool's depth as well as the surface area. So whenever we do these calculations, whenever we're trying to find out how many gallons are in a pool, you need to know how deep your pool is. To ensure those calculations are correct, divide your pool into sections by depth, whether you have a shallow end and or a deep end. If you have an above ground pool with a constant depth, you will not need to divide anything. It'll be the constant depth. And another key part of your equation is one cubic foot of water contains 7.5 gallons. So for the total number of gallons your pool holds, determine the cubic feet measurement of your pool and then multiply that number by 7.5 to get the total volume in gallons. So now what happens if you have different depths? Some pools have a constant depth, meaning they have the same depth at every part of the pool. Again, I mentioned this is common in a, an above ground pools, which just have one specific depth. Uh, others have variable depths, like a pool with a shallow end that gradually slopes down into a deep end. This is pretty common. Your pool's depth, like I said, will also factor into how many gallons or its volume of water. And now it's just a matter of plugging in the numbers. So let's move on to the rectangular or square pool with a constant depth. This is just a box, right? So we need to know the length, the width, and the depth, just three different measurements. So we take the length times width times depth times 7.5, which is the amount of gallons in a cubic foot, and that'll give us how many gallons are in the pool. So let's take an example of a 30, 16 by 32 pool with an, a constant depth of four feet. So we take 32, which is the length, times 16, which is the width, times four, which is the depth, times 7.5, which will give us 15,360 gallons. Now, more commonly, we have a rectangular or square pool with a variable depth. And so we have a deep end of about three feet that slopes down into nine feet. And so first, we have to figure out the average depth of your pool. So we take the shallow depth plus the deep depth and divide it by two to get the average. So in this case, if we took the three feet plus nine feet, divided it by two, we would get six feet. And so that's our average depth. Let's take the same example as before, a 16 by 32 pool, the length being 32, the width being 16. So we take 32 times 16, times the average depth of six times 7.5, which again is the 
amount of gallons in a cubic foot, and we come to 23,040 gallons. Moving on to a rectangular or square pool with a variable depth with a very specific drop-off point. So this is not a sloping pool. And so what we can do here is treat this like two different pools. We take the smaller area, which is the only the three feet of depth, and we measure that as if it's one specific constant depth pool. And then we take the nine foot section and measure that as another constant depth square pool. We just do the same math as we did on the constant depth. And then we just add them together to get, to get the amount of gallons. And it's that simple. Now, moving on to round pools, which are commonly above ground pools, um, which have a constant depth normally, uh, it gets a little confusing. So let's just walk through this. All we need to know, or the only measurements you need to take are the diameter from the, from the widest width and the depth. The, the diameter is really just the length of the pool itself. So you take the diameter and what we need to find is the radius squared. Okay, so we take the diameter and we divide it by two and then we multiply that result on itself and that'll give us radius squared. But let's just take an example because this is a lot, a lot of math. Okay, let's take a 24 foot pool with a four foot depth. So we take 24, we divide it by two, that gives us 12 and then we multiply that by 12. So we multiply it onto itself and we get 144. So now we can use that number. That's our radius squared number. So we can take pi at 3.14 times the radius squared of 144 times the depth of four times the 7.5, which is again, the gallons in a cubic foot. And that'll give us 13,565 gallons. And I have rounded that up because I ended up with a decimal. And I just rounded it up to the nearest gallon, which I highly suggest that you do. Now, what happens if you have an irregularly shaped pool? Well, not all pools are rectangle or square or round. Some are oval. Others have a classic kidney shape. And then some just wiggle all over the place, mimicking natural shorelines. In this case, we are looking at a figure eight pool. And you can still calculate the volume in gallons. You'll just have to do it with more math. So like we did with the drop-off pool, imagine your pool broken down into two or more smaller regularly shaped pools. Try to see smaller individual squares or rectangles or circles within the larger irregular shape and then use the formula that, that applies to those regular shapes to calculate the volume in each smaller section. And then you can add those figures together and you'll get a pretty close approximation of how many gallons are in your pool. But I just wanna note that this won't be completely accurate but it is a good way to measure these irregularly shaped pools. And then finally, I wanna talk about the Pool Care Handbook and Video Course. It is a video course that is constantly updated and a pool book that will teach you everything you need to know about taking care of your pool. It's got the easiest pool chemistry tutorial ever, secrets to getting rid of green and cloudy water, and it'll save you a ton of money on chemicals and how to keep your pool clear all season long. It'll also show you how to open and close your pool on your own, which will save you a ton of money. And like I said, it's always updated and it's available at any time you need access to it. Once you buy it, you own it for life and it'll always be updated. You can use the promo code video to get 10% off. And what you get with the pool care video course is 31 video lessons. It's instantly available as soon as you purchase it. It's always up to date and you can stream the videos anywhere that you have the internet. And it also comes with a 300 plus page digital ebook, which means it is a PDF. It is fully illustrated. Again, always up to date and you can download it to your smartphone, tablet, or desktop PC. Do you have a headache? I'm sorry. I do too. But again, just remember, if you don't feel like doing all this math or it was a little bit too much for you, you can go to swimuniversity.com slash pool dash calculator and you can enter in some, you know, basic measurements there. Or you can call a professional to come out and measure your pool and give you all the dirty details on how many gallons that is in your pool. Yeah, maybe I should have said it at the beginning of the video. Maybe save you some time. Ooh, boy. Ooh, boy. So... That was in depth, but if I missed anything, please leave a comment below. And if you don't mind, please subscribe to our YouTube channel, really appreciate it, and check out more of our videos right here on YouTube or swimuniversity.com. That's it, thanks again, and as always, 
happy swimming.